All right, welcome to the 15th Solus podcast. I am AJ, and I am the incumbent Solus Prime Minister. Hey guys, I'm Oi, and I'm a general in Solus. Hey, it's Ray, general in Solus. John, I'm general in Solus. Yo, it's Situation. I'm an Iron Man. It's Crescendo, and I'm garbage. <laughs> but somehow still in Solus. Yeah, yeah. All right, so before we get on the questions, um, what's everybody up to right now? I'm doing agility and have been for about two weeks now, and uh, I'm at 157 mil. I'm still fishing, just at 112 mil. I'm an agility nerd, 70 mil. I'm doing Slayer and right now cooking. Getting crashed, fire making. At World 37, Falador Castle. <laughs> uh, I recently hit 109 mil mining, like perfect zeros right now, but um, I'm just being a filthy AFK or in Nightmare Zone because I'm streaming this and I can't really do anything on the side, unfortunately. So I'm in Nightmare Zone. But uh, yeah. So, first question I'm talking about the recent per cape. Up, Kate Perk updates. Um, so the recent changes uh, were the magic cape being changed to permanent spellbook swap or sp- permanent spellbook change once per day. This was changed from like this, the one spell spellbook swap original perk. Uh, we have an addition uh, to the Smith and Kate Perk that was already Goldsmith and Gauntlets. We have the extra capacity for coal bag. For Quest Cape, we have the Legends Guild Tele. Uh, for Diary Cape, we have five daily teleports to a Diary Master. Um, I think that was it. I think it was just those four, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, what do you guys think about these changes to the Cape Perks? Crescendo. Uh, the only one that I really care about is the Quest Cape. Why? Uh, let's see. Replace the Slayer Ring as the closest teleport to a Fairy Ring. So being an Iron Man, that's actually really useful for things like Zolra and just maneuvering around the game. Uh, Magic Cape really doesn't affect me because it's easy enough to switch spellbooks, and you're usually on Lunar Spellbook anyways all the time. And Smithing Cape, really no reason to do Smithing after 99 unless you're going for ranks so all right um i like some of them i don't agree with the smithing cape perk that that was one i was really against because this is an iron man you always do gold smithing and you buy golden blast furnace for all your gold and that meaning that you don't need to wear your gold um your gold smithing gauntlets or whatever it's called instead of the ice gloves but now you can't do that so you can't use the ice glove benefit that just got pulled in yes you can well you can't the correct way to do it is though right when you take the the second you take the bars off the cooling rack right when you click x on that window you get the next xp drop if you're doing it correctly but i don't i haven't done it yet but i don't think you can do it in time the second you exit out of it, you get your next XP drop. But but you do know that um, we still have the Goldsmithing Gauntlets perk still to Smith and Cave, right? Wait, is there seriously? Yeah, we have we have, and in addition to the Goldsmithing Gauntlets ability, we have the extra coal bag capacity. We have both oh. of them at the same time. Don't because I feel a lot of feedback from Twitter. Well, I also like the magic one mostly just for doing like a tree run a day and then just like crescendo said with the quest cape was nice the achievement diary can tell you to like the elder gnome trap the elder gnome child to get a quick teleport to a spirit tree so you can pick poison ivy berries at miscellanea easier or a quick telly to tazar um the fishing one would have been nice if it passed but that failed the quick telly to auto's grotto and that's it for me. I kind of would have wanted the fishing cape perk, um, but that didn't pass. If I 
ever wanted to do Zolra, I guess the um, new quest cape would be nice. Uh, because I don't think people actually pay whatever Zolander teleports are now, like 27k. I don't think people use those anymore, really. Um, but I don't really do Zolra, so I don't think I would benefit very much from it. Um, one thing I was concerned about was that the Max Cape Goldsmith Gauntlets perk was going to be taking going to be taken away, but I guess that's not an issue. But even if it was taken away, you can still agility heat without run or without losing run energy. So uh, nothing really affected me. So I'm all right with all the changes. Uh, I uh, recently actually um because of the cape. The legend or fuck, legends teleport to for the quest cape allows you to do like a 26 or 27k nature rune crafting method that's like safe, not abyss, and um, it's I guess it's like an alternative for abyss or, or for nature rune crafters. Um, and there's uh, it's like Wombat mentioned to me that there's a rune crafting daily if if you use the uh, five teleports from the diary cape. Teleport to the uh, Wilderness Diary Master. That's like a quicker uh, abyss lap five times a day. So for crafting daily. Um, and ter- for the uh, Magic Cape perk, uh, I know a lot of people are complaining. Or, uh, like farmers are complaining. Um, people who do like one farm in a day, or do like and do like Slayer with like Ancients or something like that, can't do the uh, what you may call it. Te- um, what's it? That Resurrect spell anymore. So they have to like manually switch books now, which is tedious because of that um, update to the cape. And uh, I would have liked also like to see the fishing cape perk actually pass, but unfortunately that's not the case. I don't know really. I don't know why people actually voted no to that. But yeah, that's my opinion on all that. I'm glad. I'm really glad the um, the Miss Smith and Cape perk stayed. The Goldsmith and Gauntlets. Cur- Perks day because I plan on doing blast furnace in the future or some Smith and XP. Yeah, none of the perk updates really affected me. I kind of wish the fishing one would have passed though. Just if I ever wanted to do fishing in the future, I'd be able to uh, more easily. But yeah, I don't really have much of an opinion on them since they don't affect me. I wonder how much time you'd actually like waste all the way to terminal fishing, just running back and forth from the uh, okay, or run running to the place. Necklace. Game's necklace to barb outpost, right? And then you run down? Yeah. You run that, up. That could add up. That takes a while. Especially if you mess up and uh, have to get more herbs so all the time. If every day you have to like, game's necklace to barb outpost and run down, it's like run up. seconds each time. Yeah, you probably save a few minutes. I don't want to devalue game's necklaces. <laughs> yeah. I wonder if they actually... <laughs> no, never mind. Uh, so next question. Um, so regarding the Dead Man Mode tournament finale, uh, what did you guys think about that, those of you who actually watched it? I watched it. Um, I enjoyed it, except for the ending part. Um, I thought it was okay. I mean, it had a lot of viewers on the stream. Um... Everyone already knows what happened with the gas and stuff. I I wish I could participate. I wasn't top 2,000, so I didn't even get an invitation. Um, but it'll be interesting, because they said they would fix all the things that went wrong this time, so hopefully next time around it is better. They don't just kill everyone with fog. I agree. Um, it was... There was a lot of viewers, and it was really good advertising for the game. But for the finale, it built up very slow. I know they talked about it and said that they would fix it for the next one, but for that one, it built up very, very slow just to get killed like in seconds. And it was just some nice ticking at the end that no one else thought about. I thought it was also pretty funny how people stalled the interfaces, and they panned over the cooking guild and just saw level 3 there not moving and just taking no damage at all. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty funny doing that. Um, I know, like, one of my friends, Iron DBS, 
he burnt out of his Iron Man to try and win that. Didn't go so well for him. He like was staying up all night and all day. And then now he just complains about the fog scape and he has the right to, but that's my opinion on it. I thought it was hol- I thought the Dead Man mode finale was actually hilarious. How like all the flaws with it, like the interface glitching, the tick eating, the random events, the like the way the fog was all f- like fucked. Everything like it was basically the fog that won. I thought it was absolutely hilarious how all that played out. I'm pretty sure like next time around they'll fix all that stuff, which will be great. And in terms of like the publicity that this tournament brought, that was also like a really, uh, really. Good- really big positive with this Dead Man Moon finale, but it was pretty fun to watch, um, actually. I didn't watch it live, I watched the um, the video, like the recording of it. But yeah, it was it was cool. The way the way that the way it ended though was kind of Dan's game. Cringe, whatever. Was the fog supposed to bring everybody together at the end? Yeah. That was the whole point of it, and then just start killing everybody. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't follow it too closely, so so wasn't one tactic just like tank the fog and just get nowhere near other players or did I the, the tactic was um, walk into the fog and tick eat the fog how long would tick-eat? you survive doing that because the like the fog stacks but it doesn't matter because if you eat isn't that how it works if you eat on the tick right before you take the damage it'll it can't overkill you so you mean tick-eat if like the fog. 1 HP or something yeah. The fog acted okay. like a ranged or magic attack, which basically, if you're getting attacked by another player and you're sitting on one HP, and you see the projectile of a ranged attack or a mage attack coming for you, you can eat, and the ranged hit will be only calculated for a maximum hit of one because you only had one hit points. Oh, that's how you tick eat. How I don't long? How fog counts as a projectile, but yeah. But how long um, would you last just ticking the fog? Depends on what you have. Like you could tick eat with bruise. If you had, if yeah, if you had bruise or like strawberries every, or something. I don't know. Every brew dose you could, you would last like. How long did one eat like last you? Oh, the fog. The fog ticked for forty damage. Over forty damage. Yeah, yeah, but like, how how often would you get hit? Oh, uh, like every three. It was seconds? like every three or four ticks, I think, something like oh. that. So, how long would you last just sitting in the fog? Because that doesn't seem like a good tactic. Unless... Three hundred thirty-six seconds. Imagine if you had a stack huh. of purple if you had all sweets. Burst. Though. Yeah, I was imagining sweets. Get all well, the sweets in the game. Yeah, if you oh. had a stackable, if you had a stackable food, you could endlessly tick eat. I feel like be fun. I feel like Swede's gonna be very valuable next time around if, the, if that's the case. Yeah, you could sell them for a lot of money. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think in a one-week tournament, purple sweets are gonna be hard to come by. Hmm. All right. Uh, moving on though. Um. So. Uh. Almost two weeks ago, we had our Solus EHP comp, our 48-hour. Um, and in this 48-hour, um, it was a solo, and JJ Dynamite was the winner. He ended up staying 48 hours straight, doing smithing the whole time. Um, so did you guys participate in this? And if if yes, uh, what did you get? Uh, if no, or OK, how did you guys enjoy the comp? I thought the comp was really fun, and I, for one, didn't think anybody would stay up for 48 hours, let alone two people. Um, both JJ and Lelador did amazing. I still find it like phenomenal how Lelador did blackjack at like 250k an hour for 48 hours straight. That's just crazy. I personally didn't really compete too well. I think I got 30 EHP, um, which is only 15 hours each day. But yeah, a lot of people did really well. I was surprised with the outcome. I thought it was really great. Not to take away from uh, JJ Diamond doing 48 hours straight of rune, but Lelador's 48 hours straight of blackjacking. Like now, I just did a mining 30 hour, and that's like I consider that pretty similar in terms of click intensity. I did a mining 30 hour, and I could not like 
doing that shit for another 18 hours i i i don't see it the way like velador doing that shit for 48 hours straight and averaging like 250k an hour is a, a phenomenal but obviously it's click intensive so he'll get under ehp and that's why he lost but jd dynamite i guess was the smarter player in this sense but overall the comp was um very successful it was a lot more successful than i expected it to be um a lot more people participated not just solist members as well the pot even doubled uh so it was like 20 mil that jj dynamite won um and uh during the first i think that at least the first day like both like hexis and Solus team speaks were like had at least like 15 people or something crazy like that the whole day i, I thought that was really nice that was really nice to see but yeah, I, I really love the competition, and uh, we do plan on doing more in the future, probably closer to the summer. We're thinking about doing like a, a regional comp. Um, we'll see how people... We'll, we'll have a vote on what we should do. That's an idea we thought of. Canada. Yeah, can, Canada Team Canada. Yeah, what do you think, Sean? Um, I... I was disappointed in myself because I passed out after like 30 something hours uh, and then ended up getting like 40 EHP out of 48. Um, and I picked the easiest skill too. I picked agility to do, but fell asleep. Um, yeah, there's, we got donations. They were given to us to increase the prize pool. And yeah, in the future, I think I think Finn said that he would donate for a future competition, so there will be future competitions with larger prize pools. Yeah, I think the prize pool is a great idea. Um and people are actually suggesting that you you you'd pay like one mil to enter, so there'd be like a, a huge pot. Oh um, yeah, we could do an EHP comp with a buy in. That price. that was like a that was like an idea we had with the pot, and we just tried it out and see how people like it. people really like that actually, and uh, we're gonna continue doing that for sure. Really, add, really make gives like an incentive to compete, an extra incentive, rather than just the satisfaction of winning. I like the idea. Um, there's a bit of a pain with dealing with scaling and. Um, a little bit of yeah. stored EHP at the beginning, but other it's than that... It's really with, like, Slayer is probably the most... the weirdest one to do, because everyone slays... pretty much everyone slays using, like, a different like, block list, cancel list, whatever. Um, so it's really hard to, to, like, tell, like, what EHP per hour people are actually getting. And you have to kind of have to ask people one by one. And that's what we had to do with... Um, uh, I think it was Dukami. Yeah, Dukami, he was getting, like, 1.1 EHP per hour, so uh, people were complaining about that had to solve that but slayer is a weird one other skills we can pretty much um scale pretty easily abyss rune crafting abyss rune crafting we just put it at 28k because of the extra ehp you get from money and agility we just divided yeah we just took rune crafting at 28k luckily only one person did it so it didn't really matter I did not participate in the competition, even though I played like 40 hours during that. But I was doing like a bunch of under EHP woodcutting and banking mahoganies for construction. But if there's one in the future, I think it'd be pretty fun to participate in it. I didn't participate in it, but I was on TeamSpeak with pretty much everyone that did for a very large time. Because halfway through it, my boy Sean Bay here burnt out to dead man mode with me. Didn't win the EHP competition prize pool, but... Well, I didn't oh, no. burn out. I was doing agility. Yeah. You didn't win dead man mode either. <laughs> I won dead... <laughs> what? How do you win dead man mode? I got 30 mil. Yeah, right? Oh, is I that was... another Solace L? That's, Dude, a, that, that's a that's Solace a W. w. I made money swapping in Deadman mode. That's a W. Yep. Total right. W right there. Not as much as you could have made, though. Definitely. I mean, 10 mil a day? That's it's like a... I don't know. 
Uh, the comp for me, so it started Friday morning, and I had school on Friday, so I didn't have a chance of winning it, but even if I didn't have school, uh, there's no way I would have gotten close to winning it. It's kind of weird. It's like I lack motivation when we have these actual competitions, and I almost always play less during all those competitions. I'm just different like that. Not sure why. Hmm. That's interesting. I remember, like, the last comp we had, it, like, the one before, the one we just did, I wasn't really motivated at all, like, during the comp, for some reason. Like, oh, to yeah, play, yeah. to even play a lot at that time, actually. Um, yeah, this comp helped me with my motivation. Yeah, I've, me I've too. Been quite a bit I, was, I wasn't competing for the comp, but, like, it, it kind of, it did, it really did motivate me, just, like, just seeing everybody in TS and, like, Doing shit like Pictionary and watching movies, and I don't know, we were doing other <laughs> shit. It was fun. It was fun. Um, Falling asleep on TS. Just like being in TS with like 10 plus people all day was like exciting. But yeah, we plan on doing more in the future for sure. That was fun. Um, but uh, moving on though, uh, so on the month, month ahead, they mentioned. Uh, April month ahead, they mentioned Clue Scroll expansions, and in that Clue Scroll expansion, they mentioned a new tier of Clue Scrolls, which which is even harder than Elite. So that that's going to be interesting. Um, what do you guys think? I think it will be a good addition to the game. A lot of people love doing Elites. It's not just all about the efficient players, I guess. Not a lot of them like to do it. Hopefully there will be some really cool rewards. And they said there's going to be new puzzles, so hopefully they're entertaining and worthwhile instead of just getting 45 planks and a U seed and garbage. Hopefully it'll be something cool. Yeah, um, I'm curious as to what if they're going to add any more. They're probably going to add. Yeah, they're definitely going to add uh, a few other third age items into the game. I really, this would be like really controversial, like for a, like a poll, but like seeing like a best in slot like third age item like third age gloves or third age boots or something like that and you get them from that this new tier clue scroll i think that'd be really interesting but it piss off a lot of players because that'd be that would be worth too much just for a best in the slot item but other like i mean like i'd be i'm pretty sure there's gonna be other third age items in this uh clue scroll i just don't really have any ideas of what that could be um i don't really know how this update but I think it'd be kind of cool if they add these new clues to the <laughs> whole fishing bottle thing, like the clue in a bottle. Um, I guess I would get one and do it after I finish fishing, because right now my plan is to uh, do all um, all four clues right now I have in my bank that I got from fishing after I finish <clears> fishing. <throat> that could be kind of fun. Guarantee there's going to be some emote clue that's like equipped third age van bracers and third age robe bottoms plus third age mage hat and uh, dance at level 54 wilderness surrounded by rock <laughs> members. And I'm going to be like, well, can't do any of that. And it's just going to become uh, clue dirt again. But I have a feeling that you mentioned that. I have a feeling that actually, like a lot of the items you're going to need for that, I, Iron Man can't realistically obtain. I, I can Imagine almost that. guarantee that. But I, I think the new <laughs> rewards for like the easy clues, like the monk robes, gold trimmed. I don't really see a reason why we need those, but I guess peers kind of get the shit end of the stick every time a new update comes out so a new one defense fashion scape item for them to high risk in while PKing is pretty cool but <clears throat> other than that everything else about the update kind of seems pretty boring I I don't understand like are there any item slots that there isn't a third age item of like boots, like a third age, boots? like a third age two hander <laughs> well, hey, we have sword, but what if we don't have boots and insane. we don't have a ring. I don't There's think. A shield. There's a shield. Third age whip, boys. They we, did say they don't have a ring, but since it's cosmetic, I don't think it would matter anyway. Yeah, they did say the other day though that god oh. swords were from the third age, so technically your god sword is third age. 
Oh, Ooh. okay. Oh, okay. I'm not sure where they could expand, like... Third Age Arrows? Uh, <laughs> are all those, are, are all those elite things. Third Age items, like, dead content? Like third age bow and wand, they're not very good in terms of combat effectiveness. Yeah, they're, they're all cause manipulation. They're good. They're good for fashion skate, but they're not good for combat. I don't think. Do we have boots? No. No. Oh. Yeah, I well. think that's one thing we're missing. Then. But we just got three new boots. Oh wait. Well, fuck it. Are there <coughs> gloves thing or van braces? There's third age van braces already. Okay. Um. It We'll see. I've done like ten clues, like total. Um, we'll see. If I get an elite, uh, I guess I'll do it, or the new elite. Yeah, this update doesn't really affect me since I'm not a fan of clues and I find them really boring. But I do agree with AJ that I think and more third age items will come into the game with this. I just don't really know what else they could do, but I think there will be one or two. I imagine actually, and I think about those, uh, you know, the Druidic robe, third age Druidic robe tops from, or yeah, third age, third age Druidic robes from RS3 that were put into Elite Clue Scrolls on RS3. I wonder if those will make it to the, into the game. What, what about those items? Possibly. Like, like in RS3, isn't there like a third age die or something? Yeah. Cattle dies and Barrows dies. Oh. I guess copying RS3 wouldn't be the best idea, but. <laughs> Did someone just bowl all of this? Wouldn't they have to pull like an item that was best in the slot though if it was from third age? Yeah, probably. Uh, yeah, they would have to. Yeah. I think. And it would completely I feel like fail. If, like imagine if the best in slot item imagine if like third age longsword was best in slot and there's only like fifteen of them in the game. It would be cool. I think it'd be they... interesting, yeah. That'd be interesting. Yeah. For PVM, for the PVM, uh... I feel like people would lose right. their minds if the best in slot <laughs> item was that rare. But I think it would be cool. I think it'd be really good for the game, like, really expensive best tier items. I'd be for it. It would be cool if the full set of Third Age actually gave, like, an additional bonus. Of course, using the Third Age amulet for every set, because that thing's useless as fuck. But like, if you get like third age van bracers and a clue or a third age amulet or something like that, it's pretty much just so disappointing. Oh yeah, aren't van braces like the cheapest third age item? Yeah, they're like There's... barely worth anything. They're not even worth the paper that they're shown on. <laughs> All right, but uh, okay, moving on from that, <clears throat> uh, another thing they mentioned in the month ahead post was uh, that the bank place holders update will be coming to sometime this month. So like, yeah, you guys fucking know what bank place holders are. Um, I personally won't use them. Well, actually, I might, I might use one for the uh, the prospector gear and like my nightmare zone outfit. But like, I'm not gonna go too crazy with them. I think it's a cool update for sure for people that actually want to organize their bank that way. As long as there's um, sort of like a toggle option of some sort so that you're not forced to have bank spacers for items that you don't want to have bank spaced. All in all, though, besides, like if that if that's true, then um, yeah, that'd be a great update for sure. I think I have one of the probably the ugliest banks. Um, it's really messy and unorganized. I have I never cared for placeholders, but I do have friends who go to great lengths for their placeholders. Uh, shout out to Rob. And um, I wouldn't really benefit from placeholders because I never did the things that others did, like sets of graceful, like two of every skill cape. Like some people even have two of every PVM piece so that they're so that they have placeholders so their bank doesn't get messed up. But I don't care. I just I just chuck whatever I have in my bank and leave it there. I, bank organization is not a big deal to me. I agree. I don't really care much for bank organization. I'll maybe put like a max cape at the top of the bank or just lock in place of stamina just because I use the top of my bank a lot. 
but I did see on Twitter that Ash posted a picture of it, and it looked like there's a picture of a lock that takes up like half of the bank option, or not the bank option, the bank picture. I don't know if they're changing it or not, because I saw him talking about graying out the object when it's not there, or, or it is locked in place. Keep up with it much. Yeah, that's what I thought it would be too. Yeah. I pretty That's much have placeholders for everything. <laughs> so it doesn't really affect me too much, but a lot of people that I do know have OCD, and they'll spend like five hours organizing their bank. They'll take one item out, not realizing they don't have a placeholder for it, and then they'll just flip shit when their bank's not organized anymore. So nice update for people with OCD, I guess. I think once this update comes out, I'm going to organize my bank because mine isn't too tidy either. Um, yeah, but overall, I think it's a pretty nice update. I do a little bit of organization too. Just as a spur of the moment kind of thing. Yeah. Um, it'll be helpful with a few things, but I don't care too much about it. Um, yeah, I like the Angler outfit and Maxscape. Well, even even with that, it's not that big of a deal. Um, yeah, I guess I don't really need it. I don't know. Don't you have like the smallest bank of all of us? Or is that um, AJ? No, I finished Questcape, so I got a lot back. That would be me. It used to be Bon. It used to be Bon. Sorry, Bonita. Bon had a really nice bank. Had he had like, like under hundred. <laughs> yeah. He had under 100, and he still had, like, skill capes and stuff in his bank. He had all the skill really. capes. He only had runecrafting gnats and farming supplies in his and bank. And fishing. And, 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 and The, the, the yeah. good thing about my messy bank is that I have almost a full bank unintentionally. So if I ever wanted to runecraft... Good for RC. I, yeah, if I ever wanted to runecraft, I already have a full bank because I have so much junk. <laughs> I only have like 400 items. So if you guys ever wanted to RC, you have to go through the work of getting a full bank. Oh, fuck. I forgot uh, about that. 400-ish. I have 800 and a you know, living bag you know how full much of, of other items. It's going to be to find like 600 junk items. It might not oh. be worth it. It'd be worth it. I'll just like gather a bunch of items on the alt and then trade them over all at once. Well, if you're doing lavas, you'd have to put like astro runes and stuff in your rune pouch and then you're risking a rune pouch when you don't really have to be oh you know what oh, yeah for lavas just um, lavas. Nah, fuck it if it was gnats then yeah but if it's not then good but moving on from bank placeholders now um so we got had april come around and we got the april fool's joke what did you guys think with the April Fool's joke? It was a... For those of you who don't know, it was basically a, you could level up your cabbage picking by picking cabbages in the cabbage field. And then at 120, you get a skill cape with a cabbage on it. And it had an emote. Like, what do you guys think with that? Well, they said it's an April Fool's joke, but it's not a joke. It's an actual skill. <laughs> um... I hope you guys all get 120 while it's still out before it's too late. It's gone now. It's gone. Oh. Well, I'm too late then. Fuck, I missed out. What's the cabbage picking EHP? Seven. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure you get 120 in a single hour, so. It'll probably get devalued. Yeah. Next year. Wasted dev time. No more to say about it. I just find it absurd how. There was an actual emote for the cabbage cape. I don't care how short it was, just it took us forever to get a max cape emote and they just whip out whip out this. I know it's not really <laughs> the same thing, but still and yeah, it was just a waste of dev time completely and I didn't do it. I think that they should have gone all the way with the April Fool's joke and actually put it on the skills list and made like a new highest total level just to mess with everyone. I think that would have been hilarious. All the high scores would be messed up. Everyone would have 200 mil cabbage picking. <laughs> um, I mean, as an April Fool's joke, like I don't really mind if they put a little bit of like lines, like some lines of code in just for an April Fool's joke. I don't really mind that at all. I think that's good to bring the like good for the community. 
But what I think is really odd about this is that if you didn't get the Cabbage Cape, you can still just obtain it after the uh, event by Diango, which is... That kind of just ruins it. You, know, it, it, you can just <laughs> do it without again doing the cabbage picking. Not that it really takes much time, but like it's kind of silly how you can get it right afterwards if you didn't pick the cabbage. So it's a zero time skill but, you're telling me. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what it is. Are you and, saying it's not fair to the people who worked so hard to get 120 cabbage picking? A- absolutely, absolutely. So it's already devalued. Yeah, but um, what was the what would the, what was the emote, guys? I didn't look at it. I don't have the cabbage cape. <laughs> like a really short. I don't even know what it was. Like you're... a guy just picking up a cabbage off the ground, holding it above his head. <laughs> oh, so okay. Only a few ticks long. Hmm. I thought it was pretty so funny. It's better than the max cape emote. Yeah. <laughs> I would have preferred a short max cape emote that they could have whipped up in like ten seconds rather than this. I thought the April Fool- April Fools thing was pretty funny at some people. They would just walk by and pick a cabbage on Dead Man just because they needed some food. <laughs> and then suddenly they just got cabbage levels. I saw some threads on Reddit about it. That's all I thought. <laughs> I didn't actually know this was going on until like near the end of the first day when I saw um, Aubrey's video he posted. Three tick cabbage mining or something. With brain power. That was funny. Uh, moving on, though. Um, so, Nats are 340 each. And we were shocked <laughs> when we saw them at like 300 each, and now they're, just, they're sitting at 340. Like, what, what, what are you guys' thoughts on that? Kind of makes me want to make Nats, but I'm still not going to. Um... Like, I wish I had a double nat alt, I'll say that. <laughs> but, yeah, I will not be able to capitalize on the high price of nature runes, because I don't think that Abyssrin crafting is efficient. Yeah, I'm still going to make more money from the shop, so it doesn't really matter to me at all. But, like, it's really crazy this price of Nats. Like, I, I actually just looked at a Trans's Twitter meme about the Nats rise again. This is like his third one. Um, they just really... have to keep adding to the meme. Yeah, yeah, that, that's the whole go- Yeah, yeah ja- that's what Jag- <laughs> <laughs> Jagex just wants to know. But, uh, just wants to see the memes go out. But, <laughs> but like, it, it, in, for solo players, this is the best time ever to runecraft. It's, there's never been a better time to runecraft than now, and if you're using a runecraft null as well, like at, what is it? It's over two mil an hour now. It has to be. Uh, probably. Really close to it, at least. Really, like. Oh yeah, because you can make six thousand an hour. It's well over two mil. It's crazy. Um, so that's I, that I won't ever done... be able. Oh, sorry. You just go on. Go on. I had done. Uh. 15 mil RC to pay for max when Nats were like 215 each. But um, it's alright. It doesn't really bother me. However, I have to Life buy like muted. a million Nats and a million gold ores for uh, all of Agila heating, and that's going to cost a lot. Microphone but um, I don't really know if they're ever going to go down because just not enough people are making them. Yeah, I remember when I was room crafting. I remember doing, ah! I thought good prices were like two forty each, <laughs> <laughs> and now they're a hundred more than that, and that's it's just pretty crazy. I'm, but another thing is astrals. Astrals are two hundred each, and that's just oh, I don't like it. Crescendo. Oh yeah, um, nets are actually two hundred two each for Iron Men, so. And I just checked the price of Nats, and they're like 325 each now, so I think they just died a bit. But it's still pretty insane how much profit runecrafting gives. I'm pretty sure it's more profit per hour than Zolra at the moment, which... I mean, that's pretty huge. With what Crescendo said, we get ours for 202 each if we buy the um, entire stock. 
nature and some of the mages go, you know? We just can only do maybe like 10,000 at a time or whatever it is. Like, I wish I was, I kind of wish I was a solo player right now. Honestly, I'd be so happy. <laughs> but the problem is that Bibles cost a lot too. And I think it's kind of evening out for uh, how much room crafting you have to do. Oh, yeah, yeah, true. Like, um, I remember Herblore used to cost, I don't know, you could probably get it for like five to six GP per XP. Crafting was like two, uh, smithing maxed out at like five or six for Addy Plates. Now everything's way higher. I wish I did crafting when it was two GP per XP. Yeah. Instead of cooking. I remember back when crafting was like 1.5 GP and XP. That's what Finn got most of his supplies at. Hmm. Uh, moving on though. Um, <clears throat> so, talk about the uh, CML EHP raids. Mo most, most notably, the ones that are really outdated, such as like mining, woodcutting. Uh, Hunter, no, a few others. Um, recently I did a 3.5 mil mining day, and I averaged 117k an hour, and before this, Foot stated that he would change ESP rates as if someone did a 30 hour in the skill of that method. So I did that. I posted on the CML Reddit that I did 117k hour average, and I, that I said that the rate should be 115k at least uh, EHB. I don't. I think it should be 1 120. Honestly, I don't think you should be able to hit EHB for 30 hours straight anyway. Um. So I still haven't seen a reply on that thread. It's been posted for about two days now. So I'm really wondering if with uh, if Foot even looked at his uh, Reddit anymore. Um. But yeah, I'm really looking for an answer back, and I hope hopefully that that rate will actually change for once. Mining's still at 72k an hour, and you can get like one, pretty much 1.5 EHP per hour. Sometimes 1.6 if you're really, really good. Um, and that goes for a lot of other gathering skills like woodcutting and hunter, and a few others like prayer. And yeah, what do you guys think about um this whole CML EHP rate thing being outdated? Um, I think foot should change them. Like most notably, mining should be at least 115, like you said, and woodcutting should be at least 170. I'd also like to see runecrafting get updated in the future to 60k an hour. I know a lot of people would be upset with that, but it's the most efficient, so I think it would be fine considering EHP is based on efficiency. And yeah, EHP is EHP. I thought... Um, foot base EHP off of no, um, not using any alt, so I think that's why he has rune crafting at that. And yeah, I don't know flip. That, that's also true. But I also think mining and wood cutting should get put up, as some people are getting like 30, 40 EHP days quite often. Uh, I don't really have an opinion on EHP rates. Like one hour of crescendo playtime is like 0.5 EHP, so <laughs> I mean, like, rune crafting should probably be raised because anybody can do lavas and really not that expensive to do 200 mil RC off of lavas. I think it was like 500, 600 mil, something like that. I think so... the point is, is you're not making the money from nature runes, which would you use to fund your all all your other Bibles. But now, nowadays, everybody has alts, or mostly everybody. So, as shitty as it would be to say the rates stay what they are now for people that don't use alts, everybody's just going to get outclassed by people that use alts. So, rates definitely need to change in some areas. I honestly think that um, that alt should just be recognized at this point because a lot of most most of the efficient players these days use an alt, and CML should be catering towards the efficient players. So I think that alt should definitely be to consider this point. Um, so same thing for like AHK, um, and also for uh, EHP rates. I do think that um, 
I don't think you should be able to get above e. I don't think above EHP should even be a thing. Like, I think like EHP rates should be like maximum obtainable uh, XP per hour in a skill. Um, so like I I personally I'd rather I'd rather people begin under EHP than a bunch of people begin over EHP on CML because at least the people who are getting under EHP are still get like they're out their EHP isn't inflated. I guess it's deflated, but. It's just it's better than inflated. I guess it doesn't bother bother me if it's um, over EHP. I think well, a lot of people complain about solar runes as being over EHP, but I don't. If you really want to consider efficiency, you shouldn't concern yourself over what the EHP rates are. You should just do what with your play style is efficient, um, and not really worry about what a website sort of tells you to do and worry about others just kind of do your own thing oh oh man foot needs to fix like three of the four gathering skills are not correct the only one that's somewhat correct is fishing and i think fishing is a little low i'm not sure if other people feel that 95k is kind of low it should be 112k i don't know um like hunter is too low, like 164k an hour. When I know people that do 200k an hour for 30 hours straight, or can? No, they don't. Doesn't Frozen do that, or did he do Not 100k? for 30 hours straight? No. I think 190k would be fair for Hunter. I think 190. I mean, Hunter at 164 is kind of low. Um, obviously, like mining and woodcutting. Woodcutting is really low, but not very many people are actually two tick woodcutting, so it's not as visibly a problem. Um, but and they should. It it should, but nobody is really two tick woodcutting except for a couple people. Um, it still should be fixed, and hopefully mining gets fixed if it's brought to his attention. I don't know. <laughs> Actually, I got Vior to uh, PMM on Steam recently, so he probably has. Did he's probably seen it by now. On... I'm just waiting for my EHP to drop like 500 uh, <laughs> hours at this point. Oh, yeah, I'm okay. pretty sure I'm gonna lose at least 500 hours from this update. Me, oh, that'd so be really funny. The Addy plates, I'd say. Uh, I'd rather it be the last furnace. Or or that, yeah. Blast furnace would be like almost 350k now at this point. Holy. But isn't that more of a daily? Like yeah, but oh, guess, yeah. that's what you should be doing. It makes yeah, true. smithing more of a daily because there's not always people that can run the blast furnace 24 hours. Oh, and they should change Agi to 62.3. Yeah. yeah. It's like one of the easiest skills in the game. to maintain And melees rates. to 135k. They should have increased the MB rates on some of the skills that are calced into it. Yeah. Actually, yeah, I was. That's why I was. I was thinking about that the other day. Actually, like most imbue, like for example, I could I could give foot like a rate of like one twenty seven k mining and like twenty four point two k or twenty four point four k imbue, and say like this is the max rate you can get. Use this. Because in AG, like I'm pretty sure it's coked in at fifteen k an hour when you can easily get twenty. Yeah. The twenty one. So. I don't know why it's at fifteen k an hour. Yeah, what? You do your three imbues every lap, you get twenty k an hour. Why is it at fifteen? They probably just threw a rate on there and like, oh yeah, time. good. Fifteen k an hour, good. I feel like they could just make it zero time, and I don't know if people would complain about that. Hmm. Uh. Well, people like people who um, no one really complained about it. I guess no. Don't get me wrong. Like the site is actually like I really like the site, but like some rates should definitely be changed. Yeah, there are actually a lot of skills that are outdated. Like Slay, like Link Sand's getting above EHP Slayer for the past like eight months. Uh, I'm getting like super inflated mining. As you can see, I'm like on a 540 month or whatever. That's not 540 hours played. Morbidly obese. That's yeah. Same thing goes for a lot of people. Like if you look on the current week, I don't know if it's like that right now, but like people, anyone who's doing like lavas 
or is doing like wood cutting or mining or whatever, they're just getting way higher weeks than any normal player is getting pretty much. Even Lynx Titan is unable to keep with, compete with some people in terms of EHP weeks. It's kind of absurd. Honestly, like CML is starting to kind of get outdated. But um, moving on, do you guys feel it's efficient to continue training a skill even if you are bored of it? Um, I don't because I have seen a few of my friends who push themselves to train a skill that they don't enjoy anymore when they they could just skill hop, but um, by just pushing themselves to keep training a skill that they don't enjoy rather than doing something that they do enjoy. It it is a game at the end of the day, so just have fun. Like I if I'm not having fun with a skill, I'm gonna go do another skill. I don't care if people call me a skill hopper. So value fun over your goals, I guess. If you're not having fun, just yeah. I completely agree with Sean. Like if you, if you're really burnt from a skill and you just log off, it's kind of a waste. I'd much rather just switch skills and play more that way. Um, not gonna lie, if I'm bored of fishing, I'll usually get off and play a whole other game. So, uh, I don't think you should force yourself to only do one skill because <clears throat> you could you get a lot more done on RuneScape if you uh. You'll hop to success. You gotta maybe do a more relaxing skill because I'm I try to three tick fish as much as I can, but it hurts my hand often, and um, it is kind of a lot of work. So if I did another skill on the side, like when I wanted to relax, I could probably get a lot more HP in a week. You know, people talk shit, but at the end of the day, EHP is EHP. So skill hoppers are gaining more progress than typically anyone who's really grinding a skill for a small amount of hours a day and then logging off. And the people who get talk shit on for skill hopping are doing it because <clears throat> it's it's reasonably like a maintainable way to play longer hours. Um, like I could sit here and do some mining for like 10 hours a day and then log off because I'm bored. Or I could mine for like 10 hours a day and then throw in like two or three hours of Nightmare Zone and then two, two or three hours of Premier Plunder and then you just got extra like four to six hours of progress in that day and every day that adds up because I'm skill hopping, but I'm still doing the same amount of hours of mining. It's just that I'm switching skills instead of logging off and doing something else. In which case, I'm just getting more progress over time if you're looking at it from a Tundra Mall mindset, I guess. So, um, but in terms of uh, continuing a skill when you're bored of it, um, now this is a video game. If you're not having fun playing the video game, you should probably do something else with your time. Um, you know, we play this game for fun and we grind because it's fun. And if it, I mean, just for, for me personally, like if I'm not enjoying mining at all, I'm not going to do it. I'll just do some other skill. If I'm enjoying mining, if I'm enjoying mining, I'll I'll keep doing it. But if I get bored of it, I always have the option to do something else. I don't force myself to grind a skill that I don't like, and I can encourage you guys to to skill hop when you feel bored. It brings more potential out of you, in my opinion. I totally agree with you on the part where if you don't enjoy it, it's instead of logging out, just switch up what you're doing because at the end of the day. If you play more, you're just being more consistent. And I think consistency is a lot better than just being super efficient at one thing instead of just going all out of mining. If you do mining, then just take a break and do some other skills. Like in the long run, you're going to be a lot more consistent and have a lot more like XP gains and everything. Among the many nicknames that I harbor, one of them is Burnando because I burnt out for two months because of playing like that. So I don't think you should continue to do something if you don't enjoy it. There's so many things in this game that you can actually do. You don't even have to skill. You can just go play a minigame or something. 
So if you're going to be on the game, you might as well enjoy it. Yeah, that's another thing, actually, you mentioned, um, that there's so many things you can do in this game. People don't realize that, actually. People who are, you know, we're sitting here grinding a skill, we don't even think about that. But, like, if you get bored, just think of all the possible, like, think of all the things you can do with your time. If you're, if you're just bored of the skill, yeah, you could PVM, you could PK, in any, any, any way, shape, or form that you can enjoy yourself, pretty much. There's, there's always something you can do. Um, it doesn't have to be training a skill, I guess. Um... Yeah. All right, moving on though. Um, so typically skills get devalued, in which in this case being like the XP rates will increase. So like, you know, you'll have like your skill and outfits all come out, or new methods come out that are better. Um, what if this like? What do you guys think will ever be the other way around? Do you think that some skills will actually be nerfed? Like so, the max XP rate for a skill will actually decrease because of some kind of update, which causes a nerf to it. I feel like there was a small chance of tick abuse being nerfed. Um, although I think JMods support it because it is a pretty balanced idea that more effort is more XP. But um, it happened in RS3 where it was nerfed and you can't do it anymore. So. It's possible it could happen here in the future, but hey, that might be so far away that um that new methods you don't have to tick abuse will be better than our current methods with tick abuse. I don't know. I think they'll probably end up fixing things like being able to stun an alk at the same time or being able to reset alk ticks with making bolts, etc. Well, not making bolts, but enchanting bolts. So. I mean, there's the level up things in the game, and especially if you play on really shitty ping, it can be difficult to tick manipulate at some times, especially if you have really unstable connections. But, I mean, I do agree that if you put in more effort, you should be able to get more experience because it separates, you know, the elitists from the casuals, so. I think they did... Fix one. I'm not too sure. When Anglerfish came out, people said you could one tick cook any food. I'm not too sure if that's yeah, true. Yeah, that that but happened. Yeah. They did fix that. Like, Someone did a day later. record of that. Someone has a didn't week they record. Fix it? Yeah, didn't they fix it a oh, week yeah. later? Yeah, but now there's so a they... week record of one tick Anglerfish. So you never know. They could randomly fix something that they don't want there anymore. Even if it's accidentally added in and in there for like a few months or even like. <laughs> A week or so, someone can just abuse some type of nice XP gains, and then it'll just get nerfed and forever number one record. Um, the only things I can think of that could be decreased are tick manipulation skills, and if so, it'd be fast. It'd be more efficient to do those skills first because you'd save more time. But that's a very small chance I think that'd ever happen. But didn't they say like it'd be really easy for them to change it? Yeah, they yeah. said it requires almost no engine work. Like, it, just one flip of the switch and tick manipulation is gone. Pretty nuts how easy it would be. Um, yeah, that's actually kind of a scary thought that, like, if ever they wanted to, they could remove tick manipulation from the game in gathering skills. And I don't know how much, like, faster or how much longer that would take, but... That would make 200 mil in gathering skills thousands more hours. Giclem could secure rank 5 woodcutting if they changed it right now. Like, it would make woodcutting... Uh, it would make fishing like 65k an hour if there was no tick manipulation. So fishing would be like 3,000 hours instead of 2,000. Um, yeah. But Good. as long as new armor comes out, like tier 75 armor is going to come out this summer with raids. So um, melee XP per hour is only going to go up, which will inadvertently increase Slayer XP per hour. Yep. Um, I think that um, out of all the tick manipula ma ma manipulatable methods, uh, I think Woodkind is probably the most likely to get nerfed because it's the most OP. 
um, mechanic for tick manipulation. Um, I think I don't think it's gonna ever gonna happen. But Big Truck mentioned in chat that if like someone were able to find a way to, if like someone found a way to one tick everything, like one tick gather skills, I think that'd be a w way too far, and they'd finally nerf tick manipulation. Um, you know, there's we just have that one more step to step in stone, and that's probably what makes it way too OP. And Jag's probably gonna do something about it at that point, my guess. Um, also, uh, I think I think at some point down the road, I think one tick around ones are gonna get nerfed. Any tick manipulation for cooking kind of doesn't really make sense. But it's such a fast skill it, anyway. Yeah, that's true. But I think the mechanic is gonna get nerfed at some point. Some some kind of engine update to food or something. Do you think that if they fixed one tick crumb ones, it would it would change like how all the methods work? Mm. Yeah, it would. You guys think two tick wood cutting is balanced? No. Yeah, I don't think so either. No. It is high effort, but is two tick wood cutting that much more click intensive than three tick wood no, cutting? No, it's was? not that much more. It's it's, it's less click it's, for XP. It yeah, yeah that's true. It's two actually two hundred actions per minute. The same thing. Two, uh, two tick wood cutting is two hundred actions per minute. Two two hundred APM, and one and uh, three tick wood cutting is one sixty six APM. Okay, it's a little bit more actions, but for double the XP rate or something. Not double, but. I mean, retake woodcutting with a blowpipe on a snake or whatever is already pretty click intensive, and yeah. If it was double the actions, yeah, it but it's like it's al it's almost not even it's uh, it's not even close to double the actions and it's double yeah, the it, XP. It's just a little bit more clicks for a massively increased XP rate. Yeah, I also think. Sorry. I also think that some somewhere down the road from like an engine update or something, they might actually like make it so you can't like cast spells while moving or like fletch bolts while moving. No. Imagine, yeah, that's something that that's something that you can't do in RS3 because of the, the how the engine works. So who knows? In, in RS3, really, you can't cast spells yeah. while moving. Yeah. And you have to stand that. still. Yeah. No more in BU. <laughs> and and in RS3 you can't like you can't do one tick prayer. You like you have to AFK it. You have to AFK it. Yeah, prayer. you do. So that might happen too. That's kind of scary you... if you if there was no click intensive option for skills and you had to AFK everything. Work yeah. out in my favor. As long as they do all those skills first before it happens, I'd be fine with that. <laughs> I'd be completely okay if they, um, if I did all the gatherer skills and they just removed tick manipulation. I'd be perfectly fine with that. Wouldn't, wouldn't dispute. Um, but yeah, moving on. Um, so what do you guys think are some underrated CML day records? Uh, um, looking at this, I. I'm just going to go ahead and say Sir's Fletching Day record. I don't know if you'd consider that underrated, but just how many darts you'd have to do. Like, I just smashing your hand for 30 hours straight. Just no thanks. Debate, 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 debate. Let's, let's find one. I'm going to say. <laughs> Hey, Jace's con day. That was mine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, All right, that's, that's mine. Incredibly underrated. Con for 30 hours. Situation, what do you think? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, I'm gonna have to go with Lelador's um, blackjacking day, because I know he was up for like a total of 56 hours. It was just going savage Holy on just blackjacking. Shit. Even though he didn't get number one for the record or anything, so like he was up for a total of fifty six hours. He said, and just I was up for, with him for like twenty four hours during the first day of black, the PHP competition thing, and he was just like just awake the whole time and just blackjacking and just watching videos. It was crazy. 
Um, I think that Lord Speed's uh, Agility Day does not get enough recognition. Um, that is... I'm just kidding. But I think that... Um, wow. Oh, shit, the one that I had, it was... Um, uh, Vestfold's Fishing Day. Um, back when it happened, back when he did it, the rate was like under 100k, and he averaged like 93k an hour or something like that. That's really impressive for the method... The XP, XP rate that was available at that time, or meta at that time. Um, I can't think of any others that don't really get enough recognition. Uh, my mining day, I guess. I don't really get enough. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, Iron Osiris's 30 hour rune crafting. I think he actually did 29 hours of lavas. It's just freaking insane because, especially on an Iron Man. Like, the fact that he had to do all the Zulver to get the Essence for that, and all the Emeralds and stuff. Like, he had to have everything stacked, and he did, like, I think it was, like, a 1.8 mil 30-hour of Lavas, which was freaking insane. I definitely can't do 30 hours of Lavas myself, but... Do Iron Man use um, Edgeville to bank? Yes. For yes. All right. Then, yeah, that's a bit slower, too. Yeah, he's maintaining 60k plus XP per hour. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of my favorite day records is Jerry's cooking day. It's 850k an hour for 30, 30 hours straight. Um, when the second best cooking day is like 4 mil behind him. Um, but I don't think... Wait, is that Schmoll's Batman? I think it is. I don't think he did... Rams the whole time, but uh, Jerry's record is quite good. Uh, I think Jerry's day record. I think he had a little bit of an edge, from what I from what I recall. Like a L- little bit of an edge is all I'm gonna say. But uh, all right, that's that's what viewer told me anyway. Uh, but oh, I had another good one in my. Okay, um, I don't know if anyone really in the chat really knows who this is, but. A uh, guy who did a 30 hour of superheating gold a long time ago. Uh, his name was Bound. Oh. Oh, yeah. Average, like 105k an hour. So it was pretty crazy for like a um, uh, superheating day. Hey. Um, hey. Microphone muted. Do you have a craft? Okay. Okay. All right. Well, AJ's busy. He was talking <laughs> about Bound. Um, he was an old Souls activated. member. Um, yeah, he's not playing anymore. He is really nice. Cool guy. Yeah. Alright, sorry about that. (laughs) Oh, wait, yeah, yeah, never mind. I thought Christian, okay, never mind. Okay, um, so yeah, what do you... So, situation recently maxed. He's ranked fourth Iron Man to max. What are you, what are your plans after maxing, uh, situation? All right, well, let's see. Um, I made a maxing video. That was the first thing I did. I just AFK cooking since I have, like, 30,000 raw sharks. I want to collect a lot of data. I've been slaying lately, collecting data on how much prayer pots I use per task or per doses compared to how many darts I use per task and how many prayer potion seeds and herbs, snapdragons and renars for... If I can maintain not flicking tasks, along with how many heads you get with the new insold heads, trying to gather prayer XP to slayer XP to see how many less green dragons you need to kill. Overall, just um, see how much time it saves with the insold heads. I also plan going back to Zolra for a while. I want to get at least 10,000 kills. I'll probably keep continuing it when they bring out the new raid gear. The level 75 magic armor they said with prayer bonus and then with the zenite jewelry we'll just probably be expecting zora time to increase by a lot or the kill time to do de- decrease by a lot is what i should say um i plan on doing a bunch of 20 mil skills like slayer hunter i already did a few of them already i'm not sure exactly exactly what to do but i don't want to keep rambling on. So for now, it'll just be Slayer, mostly. 
Holy shit. Player always sounded really fun trying, man. I like the idea that almost every drop is valuable. Were you gonna I, make I an kinda... iron ray just to slay? Yep. I had a plan of um making Iron Man while I AFK'd to normal fishing. Uh I guess I'm glad I didn't at this point, but I don't know, Iron Man Slayer sounds like really fun. It really isn't. I don't know. That's really the only thing. Um just that almost every drop is valuable. You can use a lot of the things. Oh so. yeah, that. Just Iron the Man, prayer just fucking the part. Iron Man Slayer is pretty fun though because you use different techniques. Like for Dagonauts, I'll have to go there, bring a cannon just so no one comes and crashes it because most oh. people just see a cannon and instantly hop. So I place a, a cannon idea. down and like technique for that, that task averages like 43k Slayer an hour. If you bring a Serp Helm and a Blowpipe, just your idea of that task is to get every Dagonauts on you so your Serp Helm venoms everything and kills them off as fast as it can in your priority. Um, and you're prioritizing all the new spawns, so you're not killing much of them, the Venom is. And you just use different techniques on all the Slayer tasks. Well, for some of them. Interesting. Do you, like, prioritize, uh, like, combat XP over Slayer XP for Slayer, or does it, does it work differently for Iron Man? Um, well, we're trying to figure that out right now, like, what task would be the best, because you'll probably want to get, like, 2.7 melee XP per Slayer XP or something because we blow pipe a lot of tasks. So mm -hmm. I'm like keeping track of how much XP I gain with this Slayer list, with how many darts you use to see what we can maintain. Because we also blow pipe green dragons instead of melee them now because that's like 10 to 20% faster. So we need to get our melee XP somewhere while maintaining fast Slayer. But we could. We even barrage smoke devils, so a possible thing. I don't know if the um if we get less accuracy if if we do defensive casting where we get defense XP with magic, but we could also do that for Zolra we were discussing. Because we need to kill a lot of those so we get less magic XP from Zolra and more defense from defensive casting with the trident. Because we'll get our magic XP from charging orbs, elking and everything. Holy shit. It's just a bunch of stuff we're trying to figure out what would be the most efficient way. For right, Tuna right. Slayer, a bunch of herbs. Alright. So, moving on, we got some got all the off-topic questions here. Um, so, someone wanted to know um, if Hexus and Solus participate in a UFC octagon fight, which member would represent each clan? Oh god. Um, I would choose an Aussie probably, because they like to fight. <laughs> <laughs> can, we, can we pick Hilt? Or is he, he not Hexus? Hexus? No, you can. He was in Hex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. He's in Noctius all day, anyways. Okay, we'll, we'll pick Hilt for Hexus. Um, for Solace, we'll pick. I don't know, who can fight? Dumbfounded. Dumbfounded. Wait, Dumbfounded. Jeet, Jeet Holy shit! <laughs> yeah, I think Jeet goes to the gym, so we'll put Jeet against Hilt. Okay. Um, this kind of put me on the spot. Uh, I, okay, I don't want to answer yet. Crescendo, can you go? Dude, you gotta go with the Clutchy, man. Clutchy represents Solus all the way. <laughs> And he'll just like fucking throw any two Hexus members at him, and he'll mob them, man. Just that—that's it, dude. Hexus automatically takes the L on that one. I see. You said throw two people at him. I'm pretty sure he could take the whole clan, Carambons. Clutchy is a beast. <laughs> I'm telling you. I've known this guy since 2011. He was like a little peanut back then, but now he's like. A giant walrus. He'll just destroy <laughs> anyone. Can confirm. Clutch you will man mode anyone. AJ, do you have yours yet? Uh, I'm still, I'm still reforming it. I'm still formulating yeah, it. Right, Go well, on. Uh, 
Diog, he didn't leave Solus, but uh, if he was still here, he'd he'd be the guy. <laughs> really? Yep. Who's his Wait, opponent? Wh who's? Oh. Oh, yeah. I don't know who he'd fight. Randy, Randy could put up a fight. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna have to go with uh Randy versus Clutchy. Pretty generic, but I think that's that'd be a pretty interesting fight. Well, I mean, it'd be pretty over in pretty like five seconds, game. but you know. Hey, I I gotta honor the Brad Fordley once. <laughs> We're we've been missing him. What's the past few podcasts? Clutchy would just destroy Randy because Randy's garbage. Damn. <laughs> Damn. Savage. <clears throat> All right, still on the topic of Hexus, I guess. Um. Uh, this question, I guess, is implying that there are a lot of toxic members in Hexus. Um, who do you guys think is the least toxic member in Hexus, in your opinion? Oh, I have to go first again? Yep. Right. <laughs> um, uh, well, I guess I have to have talked to someone. Um, I guess Jicklum's nice. Isn't he? Ah, uh, he's pretty uh, rude. Uh, is Jicklum that guy, rude? dude. I don't know. Maybe maybe someone who doesn't talk at all in Hexus, like Acid Soul or something. He's probably a nice guy. Oh, good answer, good answer. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Dukami. I talked to him a lot in TS. He's a very he's a very misunderstood fella. Misunderstood? <laughs> no, everyone picks on him. It's sure. abused. He's a, he's a nice guy. Yeah. <laughs> yep, definitely have to go with Dukami as well. Only because Jiklam has a soundboard and that's annoying as shit. That automatically makes him toxic when he just joins in the team speak and instantly flooded with random noises. And I can't talk to any Hexus member for more than like 10 seconds before wanting to rip my eyes out. So. Oh, Uh, that is savage, dude. <laughs> I don't really know that many Hexus members. Um, I haven't talked to too many. For uh, people coming <laughs> our team speak a lot. Uh, Jiklim, Dukami, and Wiggins, they're all nice guys. I don't really have anything against those people. In Hexus, I think most of them are nice. There are some people who start things on Twitter that are just more of an annoyance, weren't good at skilling anyways. But I have to say the least toxic person, he hasn't joined yet. He's a little ball of sunshine. His name is Say Hello. I think he's going to be boxing <laughs> on the 13th. I'm not too sure he's an Iron Man. He's going to be the fifth one to max. Oh, that's me. That's Were you being name. sarcastic with the ball of sunshine? No, he's awesome. Oh, okay. No, I, re I really like him. He's an awesome guy. He even streams sometimes. Aloe will instantly go dark side. I'll message no, Aloe. Can, how can he go dark side? He's an Iron Man. The Iron yeah. Man community is so much better. But I'll, not, I'll, not to hate. Not to hate. Sorry. I'll, I'll message Aloe in game and he'll be like, Kill yourself, soulless scum. <laughs> I'm gonna be like, um, okay. Um, I'm gonna have to go with Dukami, except for that one time we talked about bestiality, which was, which was just uh, weird. But yeah, as I'll say, Dukami. I'm gonna turn this question around. Feel free to not answer if you don't want to. Same order. Who is the most toxic Hex Hexus member in your opinion? Randy. Uh, most no, toxic. Same order. Fuck. Sorry. Is it the same <laughs> order? Yeah, oh. same order. Um. Uh... I don't know, probably someone who flames on Twitter. Uh, I didn't get time to think about this. Um, I'm going to go with Randy. No, uh, no, 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 change my answer, change my answer. Uh, trick cool. Really? Man, I, I got to go with Hilt, dude. Every, the first time I even joined the Solus team speak, the first thing he said to me was, you sound like a frail fuck, and then he called <laughs> some other person a pelican-looking 
<laughs> I'm, I'm just gonna finish it there. Hilt is so toxic. He's a nice like, lad, one on one. Just saying. Nah, man. Hilt, Hilt's for most toxic. Like I, I'd go one on one with Randy any day, but I can't stand Hilt. But Hilt one on one, he's a little puppy. <laughs> but he's Australian, and Australians are auto savage. Sure about that. <clears throat> um, personally, I don't have anything against any Hexus member. I can't answer this one. I have to say, some of the people on their Twitter who don't meet the requirements for Smiley Rex, that's all I have to say. Well, I already answered by accident, but I'm going to go with Brandy just because of his Twitter. I don't have anything against him really, but <clears throat> he's just a savage on Twitter. Yeah, I guess that automatically fits into the definition of toxic. Giant tank as well. Honorable, me honorable, honorable mention to Giant Tank and uh, Hail Vegeta. <laughs> oh, I forgot about him. Um, another, another topic revolving around uh, this whole shit. Uh, how do you feel about the rivalry between Hexus and Solace? Being on Twitter, Skill and Cup, whatever. Uh, I don't like Solus that much, and I don't like Hexus <laughs> that much, so, I mean, Jeez. you got you got some really big shit talkers in both clans, and I mean, I'm one of them in Solus. I feel like we don't like, have enough in Solus. I, I, I feel like if we got <laughs> into one of those playground style, like, name calling battles, I'm pretty sure Skilling Sanctuary would just kill us. They're obviously the better skilling clan. You need to get a Twitter crescendo and just start trash talking. Oh, it would be great. Solus needs more of a voice. But a voice doesn't mean flame people on Twitter. Yes, it does. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually where three judges sit in chairs, and if they like the person that's singing, they hit a button and it spins them around. <laughs> oh, man. I'm not really able to put into words how I feel about the rivalry we have. A lot of it is really funny. Like, I don't mind that we get roasted on Twitter. Um, I like a lot of Randy's tweets anyways, even if they're roasting Solace. Um, I don't think what else to say. I guess it's good for people to have a choice between two different clans as well, and then you want to represent your clan is also good. Yeah, I agree with Ray about the point about having two big clans. Uh, without it, I think the game would just be really boring because, just well, Hexus would win every time, but uh, <laughs> they already win every time, so uh, <laughs> there's that. <laughs> but yeah, we we put up good fights, I'd say. Maybe not on Twitter, but in Skull and Cup, we did well. Um, I think that not even in Skilling Cup, but just in Skilling in general, um, it would be kind of boring if there was just one high-level skilling clan. There needs to be two. Because without a rivalry, then it's boring. Yeah, having two clans keeps competition fresh. Um, and also, like, all the Twitter banter, I guess, brings a lot of publicity to just skilling in general to people, like, who just, like, haven't considered skilling before, and they're like, oh, well, you know, we've got two skilling clans, I guess it must be a pretty big thing to skill. Um... Yeah, I think it's good pretty much in every single aspect except for the whole toxicity, I guess, if you want to call it that. That's one negative that comes from it. But other than that, uh, Skill and Clans is a nice way to bring people with like-minded uh, mindsets together and motivate each other. Rivalry definitely helps keeping things fresh, though. I think the rivalry... It's kind of annoying at times. I do like some of the Twitter banter, though. It does make me laugh at times. But sometimes I just face palm at how bad of memes people try and make. It just gets annoying after sometimes. Regurgitated Hexus memes are OP. <laughs> All right. Um, 
if you would use any our RuneScape item in real life with its effect, what would you use? I don't know if you'd count this as one item, but I would like to have a fire staff and nature rune. So I could elk, elk things if you count that. Ooh. You just have. Try and pick find up some, some dirt outside. Yeah, just pick up a stick and just elk and be like, all right, I have lunch money or I have dinner money for tonight. Just something. Yeah, but you have to pay for the gnats. We would get the would get the gnats somewhere, right? But you have a fire staff, so. Or if you're like in the wild and it's it's a very cold night, you just have a fire staff and can make a fire with it, like. Whoosh. <laughs> you gotta think sometimes. Um. Forgot what I was gonna say. Uh, come back to me. Um, I'm just gonna go with boots of lightness. I'd, I'd say you can Fuck. jump higher and, and run faster with them. I want, uh, I want the Jordans, the primordial boots. <laughs> I mean, honestly, like, I want, I want boots, like those red boots with the wings. Oh, uh, like, red bottoms. Talking about like, some red Octobers over here. Yeah, I want some Yeezys with the with the white wings. And the plus four strength bonus. Think about how OP of a runner you'd be if you had stamina potions. <laughs> oh damn. Uh another item that I'd want would be the Abyssal Whip. <laughs> run my own slave slavery. Oh my god. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh Holy! I'd choose the uh, armadillo pet so I could just shit on other people's cars. <laughs> okay. so, uh, go to like one of those car dealerships that have really fucking high prices, and just have your arma pet just shit on all of the vehicles. That takes the cake. That's the plus, best one. plus, I'm I'm from Dobbsland and Randyland, so you know just. Fly over to Randy's house, take a nice big dookie on his vehicle. <laughs> <laughs> you must hate Randy. Oh, you could use your Arma pet to uh, clear the snow. Could you? Yeah. Take a you snow know, blower. Your snow, your uh, your driveway's full of snow. You pull out the Arma pet, flap its wings. Oh no! And I, it could I be an alarm clock. Better idea. <laughs> Just leave it sitting outside like Randalicious' house. He'll never get a good record day ever again. <laughs> Have it screeching all night. Yeah, but keep him up for the record. No, he'd drive himself insane after a while. He wouldn't be able to drive because there'd be big bird poop on his car. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm trying to think of other items, but I can't think of anything. I still can't think of one. Oh, oh shit. AJ, your first thought was slavery. <laughs> <laughs> no, my first thought was energy, uh, stamina potions. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm my first thought was boot to lightness, but Oi did it, so I was like, oh. Uh, Arma pet. I, I just thought the armor pet has a beak. It can pick up like the annoying ass little kids that live near you and just like, bye. Fucking <laughs> <laughs> straight up pulling a friend and be like, hey guys, it's a friend here and uh, bye. <laughs> and you're done. Nice. <clears throat> All right. Um, next topic. Um. What do you guys think is the funniest, uh, funniest member of Solace? Oh, I'm ready. Funniest member. Okay, Hilt doesn't count. Um. Uh... Yeah, I come back. Well, actually, actually what no, Chris... no, I know, I know. It's dumbfounded. Um, dumbfounded. Yeah, he's a good pick. But what after what Crescendo said, I'm picking him. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the funniest thing I've heard in a long time. Uh, um, get, get back to me on this one. Um, 
Tails, even though he plays Ars the Iron Man still, he's still pretty close with Solus. I always think he's really funny. Oh, Tails I, is a good pick. I have to choose Brad, dude. Brad says some of the <laughs> dumbest shit that just cracks you up. Like, oh man, it, it's it's hilarious some of the shit that Brad says. Like, it'll instantly make your day a hundred times better just listening to Brad half the time. <laughs> I don't have a number one favorite. I do have some people, though, that just make me laugh at times. Clutchy just randomly screaming yup in the middle of a conversation randomly cracks me up at times. Some things Crescendo says, like earlier, just now. It's pretty, <laughs> he's pretty funny at times. Can uh, be. I'm going to give mine to old, old Michael Lunds. Uh, I, remember, I remember he used to come in TS a lot and... He's a pretty funny guy. He doesn't really come. He doesn't come to us anymore. But back in the summer, he used to come on a bit. He's a pretty funny guy. Him and G, up, him and G always spark. Much. Him and G always used to spark up the conversations. There's also Ziza sixty nine. Oh yeah. Oh my God, dude. <laughs> he is an amazing guy. He drinks milk every night, or what he calls milk. <laughs> What? Um, we call that Jesus juice. <laughs> we call it Jesus juice. He's an amazing guy. He's an amazing Iron Man, an amazing main. He throws all the parties every night. Does he come on t- team speak? He he comes on the other team to speak like oh quite often, yeah okay mostly at his nights when he drinks his milk and it gets crazy. He randomly starts screaming sometimes. Pronounce some people's names wrong. Roll is ours. Arr. He's a beautiful person. <laughs> um. So I guess this. Uh, shout out a random Solace member, and this ha- this would be like on the topic of not on the topic of funny. Just shout out a random Solace member. Uluvada. It's Logan, rank thirteen <laughs> fishing. <laughs> Uh, come back to me on this one. Shout out Wombat. Zillation, rank one, rank one OP. Belgian. Wombat, sir. Ooh. Rank one Belgian. Zillation is OP. Uh, shout out to my boy, Dab of Iron. You'll never max, but we still love you. Uh, I'm giving a shout out to JJ. Dynamite. Um... <clears throat> All right. Um, so, who or what got you into RuneScape? Who or what? Let's see. Well, in second grade, I remember people always talking about it, and they had played in the computer lab, but I didn't really care then. And I thought they were playing RuneScape, like oh, I'm, a, and I thought it was some type of Toy Story game. And I saw some people play it over. The, like the year, and I was really confused because I just saw them walking around Lumbridge. I'm like, that's weird. But then, and a few years later, in fifth grade, uh, I had a friend come over, and I started an account. Of course, I started it as a girl because I heard that you get free stuff if you're a girl. <laughs> and eleven years later, I'm still a girl in game. I did get some free stuff along the way. Um. That's how I got into RuneScape. Um, I was told about this. We were in computer class, whatever you want to call it, in like fifth grade, and uh, everyone was like playing it, and I was like, "What are you guys doing?" And like they showed me it, and I made an account, and uh, yeah, uh, that's about as simple as it gets. Got hooked. Uh... This was almost like a year ago, I think. Maybe a little less than a year ago. Um, I have a group of friends that I play League of Legends with. Um, I still play with them like a couple times a week. Um, but they were like, yeah, man, we're going to go play this game. And I never played the old version of RuneScape, like RS2 or RS3. Um, but I just got dragged along with them. So now I'm just a follower. Uh, what month did you start? I started playing 
April of 2015-ish, maybe yeah. May. This crazy boy. Keeping guy, keep in mind, this guy is maxed and has only pl- like heard of RuneScape a year ago. <laughs> Hats off to him. Um, Nerd. Back in fifth grade, my older brother's friend was telling him about this game, and this was um, late 2007, I guess. Uh, I didn't play it very much, but we all kind of played it together. Um, I didn't even play it for more than a year before I stopped playing <laughs> completely. And then uh, once um, Old School RuneScape came out, my brother had heard about it and told me about it, and uh, I got back into it. Did everyone else like start in fifth grade? Because I didn't know. <laughs> fifth grade is uh, the grade. Yeah, I don't. That's kind of funny. I started in fifth grade from <laughs> friends I knew. Uh, yeah, didn't really play that much, and then I heard about old school again from a friend in both grade, and uh, I played for the first month, quit, and then came back in April the following year. Just randomly, I don't know why. I just had an urge to play. Wow. Um, I just realized I got timed out in the chat for the dank meme. But, uh, so I used to play Nintendo 64 and I raged really hard and broke the fucking controller. And my sister was dating some guy around the time that played RuneScape. And I was watching him play one day, wanted to make an account, made an account, lost my life, lost my job. Uh, sold my cat for RSGP somewhere along the way there, too. And now here I am playing inefficient as hell. So, yeah, you know. Good break times. Shit. Good times. Yeah, break shit and you'll get addicted to other stuff. All right. Um, last question here. Uh, what are your guys' ideal toppings for a hamburger? Somebody... Suggested this, wanted to know. Right, well, I just love plain cheeseburgers with ketchup. I'm a plain kind of guy. <laughs> I make them myself because I'm an Iron Man. Alright, so I get um, usually a regular homemade burger. We usually put on tomato, onions, chopped up uh, lettuce, chopped up pickles. Or not, sorry, not chopped up lettuce, the hell, chopped up tomatoes. Uh, and onions and pickles, lettuce, all the condiments. Um, usually get some black olives on there sometimes if we have them. Uh, banana peppers, green peppers. Um, basically the yeah. works, honestly. Uh, That's a burger. Fat fucking That's burger. like a foot it, tall. It's it's one it's a one <laughs> patty as well. We do, we don't we don't do the double patty shit, and uh, it's a really tall burger. You squeeze it up all together, and it's uh. Everything falls out, but yeah. Damn. And then you eat it. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't compete with that burger, but I get. I usually put on mayonnaise, ketchup, mustard, lettuce, tomatoes, onions. Uh, I think that's about it. Um, if I'm at a restaurant. Um, I'll often go for a bacon burger. Uh, those are always pretty good. I like. Crunchy lettuce on it. Um, it's kind of like a fresh part of the burger. I like that. <laughs> All right. Bacon, wasabi, and a fried egg. Oh, I've got bacon. No. Uh, dude, bacon. Yes, I, I, I get bacon, bacon on it too. On well, my burger is very, very unique. It consists of half an ounce of, well, you know, half a liquid ounce of Randy's Tears. Uh, I'm just kidding. But bacon burger and nothing else, dude. Just bacon and cheese. No meat, Lots of just, cheese. Just bacon in between a patty. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. Who needs the actual hamburger? Wait, did, did the mining HP change? I hope it did. Just now? Can the... If mining, if mining HP just I got changed, we can go celebrate 
AJ just lost 550 EHP. Did I? Yep, it got changed. <laughs> yes! <laughs> no way. No AJ way. lost over it's 500 EHP, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. Yes! Oh my god. 117k? Really? Holy shit. I wanna see- I wanna see this. Oh my. Ooh. <laughs> this is just, breaking news. Just as a side question, <clears throat> because that's like the last question that we have. Who do you think is the greasiest RuneScape player? Like, greasy hair? What? I, it doesn't matter, like, who do you think would sacrifice showering for like, a week or longer? I already know someone from uh, Trance. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> I, mean, well, I don't think trans is the greasy. Uh... <clears throat> I think that was a one-time thing for him, wasn't it? Is it? Did he? Did he really only change it for anyone that's old, like for post ninety nine? Is everything before ninety nine still the same? Let's see. Thank you. My EHP won't go down then. Uh... Um. Yeah. Only so like. 98, 97, 96, <clears throat> all that is still 67k an hour. It's only at 99 that it's 117k. A AJ, you drop from top page to rank 42. In the <laughs> HP. HP. Yeah, yeah. Oh my god. Can we get can we get can we get a yeah chain going to celebrate that? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I, I I thought someone else was gonna do this. <laughs> yeah! 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 Sounds like a fucking wave runner, dude. I'm dead. <laughs> I'm dead, dude. We're done. We're done. Sean, it's your turn. No, no. You got this, Sean. I'll go after you, Sean. You got this. Go. <laughs> We're done. No, you you go, Sean. I'll go after you. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What was that? What? Are... What was Sean. that, Sean? Do a real one. Sean, my what? girlfriend's over and I did it. You better do it. <laughs> yeah. Is that is that Don't really be a fucking Sean? pussy, dude? What? Is that the best? Yeah, that's you all should. I got. You should accept one question from the chat to ask your girlfriend. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not doing real one. No, 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 no. We're gonna we're gonna end it here, guys. Um, <clears throat> uh, for those of you guys watching the YouTube of this, I'm gonna put the Google form for submitting topics for the podcast in the description. Um, the 16th podcast should be the weekend of the. 23rd 24th of april <clears throat> um i'm gonna be tweeting out regularly uh scheduled tweets um where you can submit a submit questions for the next top uh, next podcast um other than that um yeah hope you guys enjoyed what are you it's... cooking on if you're cooking what are you flushing on if you're flushing we love to never know. get tired we'll tired of your comments in the comment section below <laughs> <laughs> see y'all in the next one yeah!